Hello folks and welcome to our review of the cosmological argument, which asks, why is it a fact that the contingent things which exist do exist? Now that sounds fairly complicated, but it's actually quite simple. There are many, many things which you come across in our universe which you can imagine not existing. We can call those things contingent or we can call them maybes. So we can think of germs, viruses, trees, animals, people, the things that people make, galaxies, stars. Anything you come across and you could imagine that thing not existing. Anything that you can come across and you ask the question, well, where did that come from? Those things are all contingent. We can imagine a universe which exists without those things in it. And if you wrote all those things down on a list, you would eventually come to the realisation that, well, it's a bit of a mystery why there's something rather than nothing. Look at all the things in that list. None of them had to exist. So how come there's something rather than nothing? The cosmological argument answers, well, there's something that had to exist and it made everything else. So the cosmological argument comes to the conclusion that the only thing which would have had to exist and which was capable of making everything else which didn't have to exist is God. In other words, God is necessary and he made all the contingent things. He made all the maybes. Well, some people don't want to reach that conclusion and they object. Why couldn't a contingent thing make everything else on the list? Well, the difficulty with that is it gets you into a circular argument. It's like somebody saying the Bible is the word of God and we know it's the word of God because the Bible says so. You just go round and round in a circle. Saying that a contingent thing made all the other contingent things doesn't get you anywhere because that contingent thing would not have had to exist. So if you say something like the Big Bang made the universe, that doesn't help you because the Big Bang would be a contingent thing and that would not explain where it came from and we don't get an explanation for the whole list's existence. We've just argued round in a circle. Well, some people say, imagine the universe is infinitely old and each state of the universe is explained by the state just prior to that. So we've got an infinitely long list of contingent things and everything on the list is explained by the thing just before it. Wouldn't that get rid of the need for God? Let's imagine you come across a crowd of robots stretching as far as the eye can see in every direction and they're all standing in lines and each robot is being made by the robot standing immediately behind it. So the robots are actually in the process of being constructed. That gives that leads you to ask a question, why do these robots exist? So you ask them and the robots respond to you. They say, listen, the reason we're here is that these lines are infinitely long. And each one of us is being made by the robot just behind us. And that explains where we all come from. Well, that wouldn't really strike you as a particularly good explanation because you would still have the question, why are there any robots at all? Yes, I know why this particular robot in front of me is here. It's being made by the robot behind him and the robot that robot's being made by the robot behind him. But why is there this infinitely long series of robots? Didn't have to be robots. They didn't have to be making each other. And it's the same as the universe. We can ask, why are all the, these physical events at all, even if, they're, even if they are infinitely many? Well, then some people ask the question, well, who created God? How come God's so special? Now, the answer to that is, well, no one created God. God isn't on the list of contingent things because he isn't contingent. He's what we call a necessary being. But then some people respond, well, that's cheating. You know, why should we say that God doesn't need a maker? What's so special about God? Well, think about everything on the list. Everything on the list of contingent things is limited. But God has no limits. God is infinitely powerful. God is infinite power and love. Everything on the list is limited by things like time, space, energy or the laws of nature. But God would be capable of making anything on the list. In fact, he's capable of making anything he wants. There would be nothing capable of making God because he's as great and as powerful as it gets. And that makes God the perfect explanation for everything else that exists. You can't get greater than God. Nothing can make him. Nothing can explain him. He's the perfect stop, stopping point for explanation. Well, finally, what about science? Wouldn't science explain why we have the universe? Doesn't the Big Bang, for example, explain everything else that exists? Well, we've already answered that. 
The Big Bang is a contingent thing. It didn't have to exist. It's one of the maybes that appeared on the list. We can imagine a universe where the laws of physics wouldn't allow Big Bangs to happen. See, what physics does, it describes a system. It needs some basic stuff, some object that makes up everything else. It could be particles or energies or fields of force. And these, that basic stuff makes up everything else in the universe. And then physics looks at the rules, the laws of nature that govern that basic stuff. And it describes how that stuff can evolve from one state into another. And really interestingly, it uses mathematics to describe how this stuff changes from one state into another. Now, what physics cannot do is it can't tell us where that stuff came from. It needs that basic stuff to give you any explanation at all. It can't tell you why the amount of stuff that exists does exist. It can't tell you why there aren't fewer atoms or why there aren't more fields of force. It, it needs that basic stuff to give any explanation. And it can't answer where that stuff came from. It can't answer why it follows rules. It can't follow, explain why it follows mathematical rules. And why, the, why do we have the laws of nature that we do have and not others? Physics really cannot push beyond be the basic explanation of there's this physical stuff, this basic stuff, and there are basic rules that govern its behaviour. It, that's what physics needs to give any explanation, and it can't push beyond that point. Whereas if there's a rational God, he could have made a universe full of this basic stuff, full of particles or fields of force, and he could have set the mathematical rules that those objects would follow. So God becomes the best stopping point for explanation. He explains why everything else would exist. So we're left with God as the architect of the universe and the explanation for why all the contingent things on the list exist. Why does everything on the list of contingent things exist? Because something had to exist and that made everything else on the list. And what has to exist? and also has the power to make everything else on the list? Well, the answer to that is God.